Well, hello and welcome back to another episode of the Realm of Unknown, and today we have the Patreon winner of last month, being the historic Route 66, or Route 66, in which that was the winner of the Haunted Highways and or Haunted home, uh, Roads, I should say, not Homes, uh, Patreon poll. I've been trying to get more of a sort of theme going when it comes to the polls, and for this month, currently, the active poll is for haunted colleges and university campuses. Sort of a continuation of a previous sort of trend that has been going. We've talked about two haunted colleges here on the podcast so far, and it's been a topic that I've talked about a lot when it comes to the YouTube coverage that I've done uh, in recent years, and it's just sort of something that I kind of wanted to continue in some regard. Now, that being said, if you do want to participate, you can do so by going over to the Patreon and supporting, and if not, you can just simply go over there and have fun, because I post a lot of update stuff and uh, news articles that I find interesting that might just not, you know, be big enough to actually sustain a full episode, and so I post them over there, and just sort of keep a sort of discussion going. It's just a different form of social media really for me at this point and uh, that's how I use it currently and if you wish to be a part of it you can just do so by going over to patreon.com forward slash realm of unknown now let us get into today's topic because it's a doozy and I have a bit of an announcement after the fact once we wrap up so again moving forward with episodes I discussed in I believe the previous two i'm going to be using a more of a note based format when it comes to the scripts rather than scripting out every word because it's just a bit easier and i think it flows a bit more naturally so the historic legend uh pretty much throughout the entire united states north america and essentially throughout the world is route 66 and it's there for a good reason This route is massive in size. It is roughly 2,450 miles in length, approximately 3,950 kilometers for anyone who is an international listener. These are rough numbers. These are not the exact ones. And it's not a surprise that a lot of legends and stories have popped up over the years. Again, this is a very large route. Uh, It stretches from Chicago, Illinois, all the way down into uh, Santa Monica, California, cutting across a total of eight separate states along the way. So you got a lot of land, you got a lot of different people, a lot of different stories, and a lot of different events that occur on or around this road. And it's just sort of become synonymous with the legends. The route was constructed in 1926, and it lasted until... For the most part until 1985 when most of the road was being converted into different number routes uh, as well as being overturned in order to sort of favor newer more efficient routes and uh, highways that were being implemented in this era i believe route 40 or 44 is one of like the major ones uh it essentially runs like parallel and uh the interstate highways they just sort of took over where route 66 sort of faltered because it wasn't it wasn't really constructed with the most efficiency in mind it has a lot of weird curves and a lot of just detours that don't need to be there and so it sort of went with the wayside as the years went by so the stories that we're going to talk about with this topic they come in a more of a list slash overview and you'll understand why when we get to the end of it but to start us off we have the hotel monta vista so the hotel is supposedly extremely haunted like famously so if you are heading down and having a road trip in the region and you are looking for any sort of place to just stay the night that's creepy and has some ghost stories to it This is by far the one place that you should be staying at. It's notable for the second floor, supposedly the most haunted floor in the entire hotel, as there are so many spirits that the hotel management can't even put pets on the floor. If you go there and you have a pet and they happen to book you there, apparently the pets freak out so much and cause so much disturbance for the other guests that they just have made it a policy, like an unspoken rule, If you have a pet, you can't stay on this floor. 
Scariest place, though, within the entire hotel would be probably a place you can't visit openly, but that would be the basement. And this is where the sounds of the of a child or a baby crying in the dark has been often reported. And it sort of just plays on loop over and over and over again until you kind of leave. And that's not something you want to hear when you're walking in a basement. Next up, we are moving into Missouri, and we have a small-time road called the Lower Ford Road. But many in the area have redubbed it the road called Zombie Road. This location was paved uh, at a previous point in life. However, it has become almost impassable if you are hoping to explore it by car today. Zombie Road gets its name due to the large number of ghost stories associated with the secluded area with one of them being the ghost of a man who was hit by a train in the 1970s, and another being that of a mysterious old woman who allegedly is heard screaming at people from a house at the end of the road. But one story in particular has really given Zombie Road most of its notoriety, and this is the death of Della Hamilton McCollin back in 1876, and this was another individual who was struck by a train car. Reports of a phantom glow with a sort of bluish-white light to it and a translucent figure has been seen wandering around, and people believe this to be the ghost of Della. And apparently, these sightings have been linked to the location that she supposedly passed away from. So, within Route 66, there is a stretch of highway, uh, this is the 6th branch of the route, which is known as Route 666. So, the association that the Route 66 has to the devil, it's actually, it's there, it has some credence there. And uh, obviously, this sort of association to the dark and sort of evil side of things, it's gonna stir up some stories. And with that comes pretty much one of the more bizarre and in some ways terrifying paranormal sightings uh, throughout the entire stretch of the highway. One of the strangest, perhaps, is the uh, report coming from Linda Dunning, who was the author of Specters in Doorways, The History of Hauntings in Utah. Her story actually comes from an experience that her husband had while he was traveling along this particular section of Route 66. Again, being Route 666, which is the uh, the sixth branch within the overall highway. So his story goes that one night, very late, he was driving and he saw a truck that looks like it was heading in his direction, just pretty much in the middle of the highway, in the middle of the night, and uh, it was on fire. Yes, uh, so he describes this massive truck uh, going so fast along the highway that sparks were flying off of the wheels as it was hitting the pavement, and the flames were coming out of the smokestack. So Linda's husband estimated that the truck was traveling approximately 130 miles per hour, and he was rightfully so scared and pulled off the, to the side of the road, exited his car, and moved some several yards into the desert in order to get out of the way. He waited there patiently for the car or the, the phantom truck to just barrel on through and it just kept going. It just moved on through the highway and uh, once it was out of sight, he decided to just get in his car and then just quickly drive away in the direction that he was going, which to be fair, I'm not going to hold that against him. If you see a flaming truck moving at you at top speeds, going the other way probably is the best bet. So another uh, similar location to the Monte Vista Hotel is a sort of location that is a must-see go-to if you are traveling along Route 66, and that is the Merrimack Caverns. So this location sees approximately 150,000 visitors every single year, and although it doesn't seem to sort of count the ghosts of the location into that number, and we'll understand why... <laughs> Some of the more frequent sightings include that of a Native American woman who looks, or I should say, likes to stand at a distant pool of water. There is also the figure of a woman in a formal dress, most likely from one of the uh, many galas that were held in the location over the last several generations. 
And it also seems that there is a mysterious man in black who many speculate might actually be the infamous Jesse James himself. So despite this location having so many uh, hauntings, it would seem that it's not fully marketed as such. It's still sort of seen as a natural location to go see. But those ghosts are also bringing in a lot of attraction to this spot. So I would emphasize probably putting a bit more advertisement onto that. So moving in along the route, we have the location of the Peace Church Cemetery in Joplin, Missouri. So an unmarked grave, apart from everyone else, held the sort of notorious, let's say, body of a spree killer from the 1950s by the name of Billy Crook Jr. Now, Billy had a pretty horrid life growing up, and one day he just snapped. He went crazy, and he made his way to Oklahoma City, where he killed seven people before being arrested himself, charged, sentenced, and ultimately executed. His body was transported back to his hometown, however, the cemetery in which he was buried only allowed so if he had an unmarked grave. So reports nowadays have it that there are uh, phantom lantern lights that can be spotted around and above his grave some nights when people are there by themselves. If you are unlucky enough, however, there are some elusive reports of Billy standing in the tree line with his eyes full of hate and sort of a light glow to them. So some people believe that the lights actually might be that of his eyes, others are unfortunate enough to actually spot Billy's ghost lurking in the shadows. Sticking with cemeteries for this next one, we are, however, moving over to Kansas, and we are going to look into the Oak Hill Cemetery, which is actually, uh, I should mention, uh, we mentioned earlier that there are eight states within uh, Route 66. Kansas is actually the one that it is in the least. It is only there for 13 miles. Uh, which is actually the same distance it takes for me to get to work, ironically. So with this story, a man back in the day did not give his wife the proper funeral that she probably deserved and chose to bury her in the cheapest coffin imaginable and not spend anything on the service. So a few days after the fact, she got all mad and petty and decided to crack the gravestone that she was buried beneath. Uh, Because this story goes that the widower continuously had to replace this gravestone over and over and over and over again because his wife, supposedly, beyond the grave, continued to break it out of disgust and frustration due to her husband's uh, cheapness. It got so bad, how uh, actually, then it's so frequent uh, that he actually was forced to move away from town because he just couldn't deal with having to replace the headstone and revisit the grave over and over and over again. But good on her. Moving into Oklahoma with this next one, we are checking out the Coleman Theater in Miami, Oklahoma. Uh, And this was added to the National Register of Historical Places back in 1983. And for good reason. This was once a thriving place for people to watch movies. And now, however, people have sort of restored the theater for tour purposes but they're getting a bit more than they actually bargained for with their ticket purchases. So according to local legend, the theater was actually built on top of a mortuary, and underneath the main seating area is a crematorium. Visitors have reported extreme heat coming from the room when they shouldn't, and this is accompanied by the sound of whistling, whether it be mechanical or human in nature, no one really knows. It's just sort of that sound in general. And many believe that the use of the building, for its original use as a mortuary and crematorium, has sort of captured this unseen energy that still seems to linger about the movie theater today. This next one keeps us in Oklahoma. However, we are moving over to Guthrie, and we are discussing the death of James Phillips who was a prisoner uh, up until his unexpected death. Well, unexpected is an operative term because he was actually sentenced to death, uh, and this was going to be done through hanging. And uh, the prison that he was housed in, however, has not hung anyone in a very, very long time at this point in time. So they had to reconstruct an all-new gallow and scaffold 
from the ground up. So every day, Philip had to watch from his cell as the gallows were reconstructed, and with each passing day, he had to continuously see this image being erected in the short distance from his cell. This got to the point in which, however, the guards ended up finding him dead in his cell after having died from a mysterious heart failure. And uh, apparently the cause of death cited was the stress of watching his own execution come together. To this day, guards can still hear footsteps and a face looking out the window of where the cell was, looking to where the scaffolds would have been. We're moving a bit more south into Texas, and we are checking out the Catfish Plantation, where multiple spirits have been said to haunt the grounds. None, however, are more tragic than the ghost of Elizabeth Anderson. And if this story is true, uh, allegedly back in the early 1900s, a jealous ex-boyfriend burst into the house and killed Anderson while she was awaiting her wedding day. She was still wearing her white wedding dress, and uh, this is still seen in her spirit today. If you were to spot her, she is seen either in the dining room or looking out the bay window in the front of the room, in which is, this is actually the spot in which she was killed and later on found. So these next two, uh, these next two are strange because they're polar opposites, but at the same time they make sense. So the first one is the uh, lingering of a Confederate soldier, and we are staying in the same location with the Catfish Plantation, and this is within uh, Waxahaki. I, I might be pronouncing that wrong, or maybe it's pronounced Wickahickey. Um, it was, uh, whatever it is, Texas, uh, so we're on pretty much the opposite side of town, uh, and we are over into Becky Road, and according to this legend, this is the last Confederate soldier within the Civil War to have been hung in the area. His name was Private John, uh, Hemerick, and he was hanged in a tree. Years after his execution, however, people still call out, seeing that they see a young man standing on the side of the road, in a confederate uniform so while these claims are likely not true to someone actually physically doing that it is notable to say that they oftentimes see him hanging from a tree in fact the tree that he allegedly was hanged at in life so whether or not they're seeing some grotesque reenactment or the last echo of his life it's interesting to know and like I mentioned, on the opposite side of the coin, uh, we have stories of Union soldiers. And this one takes us a little bit uh, over into Texas with uh, Arlington in this case. And this is the local legend regarding the River Legacy Park. And it's stated that uh, a group of Confederate soldiers used to ha uh, capture Union soldiers and hang them in the big trees that are located in the park that look towards a giant gate. Because of this whole ordeal, the gate within local legend has been redubbed Hell's Gate, as it is most likely the last thing that all these Union soldiers saw before they died and as they were dying. And it is rumored that over 100 soldiers were killed at this location whether or not they were all killed in this method, I do not know. However, even if a few dozen were, that's still a lot. And to this day, if you were to visit the location, particularly around the gate and near the large trees in the area, you can hear the distant sounds of sobbing and crying that many believe to be that of the Union soldiers as their last day on Earth. And the final story that we are going to be talking about, another short one, is that of a burned down orphanage. And this took place in the year of 1897, when a massive fire broke out in the Buckner's Orphanage Home, or Orphan's Home in Dallas, Texas. Being made completely out of wood, the building went up into flames fairly quickly, taking the lives of 15 young male orphans who were unfortunately unable to escape and were trapped inside. They were all burned, or I should say, they were all buried in the cemetery, which was also located on the orphanage grounds. But reports say that if you were to visit the location today, the sounds of crying and screaming can still be heard throughout the property. 
along with the unexplainable smell of burning uh, whatever. Some people say flesh, some people just say a sulfur cell, um, smell in the air, but uh, a smell of something burning that doesn't have a source. You just sort of smell it throughout the property and trying to find it doesn't really help narrow down where it's coming from. And now, as I mentioned, that was the last uh, sort of story for this topic. And if you were following along, you may have noticed that pretty much all of these stories were, I shouldn't say pretty much all of them, were paranormal or ghost related in some way. And this is due to the fact that Route 66 is massive and the amount of stories that come out of it are just sheerly Like, it is just insane the amount of stories that come with... Because a lot of these are either on the route or just within a town that sort of borders the route. And uh, there's just so many. I couldn't couldn't just do everything within Route 66 in one episode, particularly something like this. And um, while I was compiling this sort of information, an idea sort of sparked. And I'm... I'm sure people have done this in the past. I'm sure other podcasts and other entertainment platforms have done the exact same thing. But it's something that I thought would be interesting. Um, I thought it would be fun at the very least. And that would be for us uh, as a group. I'm not sure how I'm going to be doing this structure. Although I do have a slight idea that I will mention after I, I bring it up. Us as a group to take a sort of road trip, theoretically through route 66 and uh what i mean by that is start in chicago where the route would start and move all the way through until we get to santa monica and uh talk about all the ghost stories in all the towns and locations along the way and do it in order to how you would uh come across them in the actual trip so The way I'm sort of thinking of it right now, because this was a Patreon exclusive type thing to begin with, uh, I think I'm going to be keeping the episodes over on Patreon. The very first, the way I'm going to be doing it, uh, it's going to essentially be a double episode week type thing, if I can make that happen with the uh, original episodes that come out, like like you're hearing now. Um, So there would be four a month. And the uh, four episodes will be posted over on Patreon. And then the following month, the, uh, the, the next month in whatever order, I don't know, honestly, I'm just spitballing this, uh, a, lot of, a lot of this. Um, the following month, I will compile those four episodes and then air them as a sort of compilation over on the actual podcast that you're hearing here. I don't know where I'm going to post that. I'm not sure when I'm going to post that within the month, but it's a sort of way that it becomes a Patreon early release, I guess guess this is the best way to say it, while also allowing Patreon exclusive, um, like, month-long stuff. So even though the compilation is being sent out the month next, uh, you still have that whole four weeks of the new month to enjoy over on Patreon uh, as an exclusive. I, this is sort of based off of another podcast that does something similar when it comes to sort of bonus uh, discussion, not like full episodes, but just sort of like a after episode discussion that they then compile and then send out like the random number. Sometimes it'll be like five episodes, sometimes it'll be like eight or ten. But I thought this would be cool. It'd be something to add on to the Patreon because it's sort of lacking in content right now. Uh, I do definitely need to find a time in which I can record this sort of stuff, uh, the living condition that I'm currently in, uh, and schedule, I should say, uh, specifically, doesn't really allow for recording that easily, and I'm still adjusting to it. Uh, I mentioned that I have a new job that I started recently, and uh, it's going well. I'm having fun. Um, I just, the schedule uh, for myself, that is, like, the, the work schedule is fine, it's just 9 to 5 or eight to five, but the schedule that I, I put myself through in order to get there through uh, commuting is rough and doesn't really allow me time to fully sit down and record. And uh, that's something I need to work on. That's something that I'm going to be trying to push for more as uh, a lot of this COVID stuff's shifting and um, readjusting everyone's schedules again, because 
America's constantly in flux with this right now, and it's weird. So just bear with me. Uh, this is a series that I want to put out because I had fun doing the uh, Fright Month series. I didn't, I wasn't able to do enough with that, but I really do want to put a lot of time and effort into this uh, and make it something great in some way, if that's possible. Uh, and we'll see how it goes. If it, if you guys are not enjoying it, just feel free to let me know. Um, but again, this is just like a bonus thing, so it's just something that I thought I would enjoy doing, and I hope that you guys can enjoy along with me. So with that, I am going to wrap up today's episode. Again, this was the Patreon winner uh, of June, and this is being released in July, as they do. And the July poll is currently active again. If you wish to partake, you can do so over on the Patreon, and uh, it is the Haunted Colleges and Universities topic. Uh, I want to give a shout-out to Sergio for helping with um, voting for these polls when it comes to the topics and uh Brett, who has come back as a Patreon over, over the, um, after a sort of hiatus period. So thank you guys for supporting the podcast and supporting me over there. And uh, I want to say thank you to whoever, because it's anonymous. They didn't leave a comment, but they left a review. And I believe it was a five star. I don't know, though, <laughs> because I can't tell uh, because we have so uh, little that the numbers didn't shift. But I'm assuming it's a five star. <laughs> um so thank you to whoever that was. I just want to give that shout out real quick. But I hope you guys are having a great weekend. And I hope you guys are getting through this uh, the best that you can. Um, I'm sure we will eventually. Uh, things hopefully will get back to normal. Uh, whatever normal will be at that point in time. But I hope you guys enjoyed. And I hope to see you guys in the next episode. Remember to stay spooky.